Okay, this is a first look at my new game. Uh, it's called Space Attack 2, Metatron's Cube, or Search for the Cube of Power. Um, so, quick history on this. About six years ago, I created a game called Space Attack. Uh, this is somewhat of a sequel, somewhat of a remake of that game. I wanted to learn how to use the Godot game engine. I thought, what's better than to create a game I already know how to make? So I decided to remake the game. So I rewrote all the code from scratch, but used most of the same assets. Gameplay is very similar, few new power-ups. This game, one of the big differences, actually has an ending to it. The old game, I never really finished, it progressively got harder. So once you beat the final boss, the game kept going until there were so many enemies on the screen that the, your computer or phone just stopped working. Um, or not stopped working, but the game would run very jerkily. Anyway, uh, fully open source. GPL3, it's up on GitLab. Um, I've compiled it for Linux, both 32-bit and 64-bit. Uh, it's uh, compiled for WebAssembly, so you can play it in the web browser. Uh, APKs for Android, uh, and uh, Windows 64-bit, and also um, Mac OS, which I have not tested, but I compiled for it, so I don't know if that works. It should be working. Uh, again, all the links are in the GitLab page. Uh, with this, you can uh, download and try it. I do hope to uh, get this up in the Google Play Store. The, um, the Google Play Store, I'd like to get it up on F-Droid and maybe even the Debian repositories. I've never done any of that, and so that would be a learning experience for me. So I'm looking forward to trying to do that. Uh, if I do, I'll definitely get you all links to that. Uh, right now, I'm just testing it out. I have some friends testing it out, but I think it's pretty much done. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and just start playing. Again, very simple uh, space game. So you, you use your mouse or touch screen to move your ship around, and when you click, you shoot. There's lots of power-ups that give you new weapons and other things such as that. Uh, there are strobes, so, so I should put a warning for people with uh, that might be prone to seizures. Um, but yeah. So it progressively gets harder. So when you start playing, it might seem relatively easy, but it does get pretty chaotic as the game goes on. Um, and every so often, you'll create, you get to a boss. So the first boss comes in after you get to 150 kills. After you beat him, I think it's 400 or 600 I set for the next boss, and so forth and so on. There are four bosses. After each boss, a new enemy comes in. So right now, we're fighting these red enemies that come straight at you. They take one shot to kill. After we beat this boss, the next enemies come in. They come in from the side of the screen and take two shots to kill. Then after the third boss, you have enemies that take three shots to kill. And then you have enemies that take one shot to kill, but they come up from behind you. Uh, after all that, there is a final boss. Uh, and once you beat him, you get Metatron's Cube. So Metatron's Cube, what is that? You might be asking. Uh, I was just trying to come up... You know, I called this Space Attack 2. I wasn't very creative with the name of the first game, just called it Space Attack. I wanted something a little more unique, uh, so I decided to come up with a name. Uh, and I thought what would sound cool and spacey and like um, Tron Metatron was the name I came up with. I googled it to make sure there was no games called Metatron already. Uh, but when I googled Metatron, it came up with this whole thing about this thing supposedly called Metatron's Cube. Uh, there's really no affiliation with it, but I guess it's some sort of spiritual cube that gives people powers. I don't know. Um, but I thought it sounded neat, so I kind of based the story of the game on that. But really, it has no association to it. Um, this game was designed as something to kill time. So, like, right now, there's no... If I was exit out of the game, it doesn't save any of your settings. If I exit out and go to the main menu and come back and it continues where you left off relatively. It saves your level and kills and score. Uh, but if we were to close the program, all that goes away. It's something to be played in one sitting. I haven't actually timed it, but I would say it probably takes about 15 minutes to beat the game completely. And um, it's just designed to be played when you're in a waiting room or whatever, mainly on your phone, just to kill time. Uh, but I also want it to be easy and non-frustrating. So you have unlimited lives. It does count your deaths. So uh, I have, with the original game, have had friends over and we played it and saw who could get the, the most kills in three deaths. Or you can go, you know, who could get the most kills before they die. Or, you know, you come up with your own way to play. But I wanted it to be, I created this, again, six years ago when my wife was pregnant, and I, well, the original one. 
And I uh, remember playing the original version of this game on my phone um, while I was waiting for him to be born. You know, it was that night in the hospital. And I already had my daughter, who was five at the time, and I wanted to make sure that uh, this is something that kids could play without getting frustrated. So my kids love playing this game because, yeah, you could die. It does start getting harder as you go and you die a lot, but the game keeps going. It isn't like you have to start all over again. It's not a frustrating game. It's just you just keep going, and you can play to see if you could do better than you did last time. Uh, so, yeah, again, it's compiled for pretty much all major platforms. Uh, it is available on my website. You can play it right in the web browser, although right now if you play it in the web browser on a mobile device, it works on my mobile device, but there's no full screen option. I hope to add full screen options in the future to the mobile, maybe, but you can always download the APK. Uh, the only real thing is if you're on an iOS device, an iPhone, or an iPad, uh, I did not create binaries from that. Godot can do that, but I think you need to get security keys from uh, Apple. And really, to get this on iOS devices, I would think that I would have to put it, to the best of my knowledge, in the Apple uh, Apple uh, App Store, uh, which, from what I've read, uh, you can't put stuff that's GPL licensed in their store, and this is under a GPL3. So it, I haven't wasted my time making an iOS package, although feel free to, if you want to download this source code off of GitLab, and compile it for iOS and put it in their store. I'm okay with that, but again, I don't know if Apple's okay with that because it's under a GPL3. You can, it's it's a GPL3, so you can even charge money for it if you do that. And I, I would love to see people on iOS be able to play this, um, but Apple just makes it not worth my time to try. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. They they, could, they should be able to play it in their web browser. It just may not be able to go full screen, but I would think it's still playable. But I haven't tested it. If you, ha you do play this and you f have any issues with it, feel free to uh, let me know. Uh, again, the GitLab page, you can submit issues there. If you want to take this and add features to it or change the art or create a whole new game out of it, that would be awesome. Let me know if you do. I'd love to see it and, and let other people know about it so I can share it with them. And uh, yeah, I do thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy this. And I would love to hear what you guys think. I'll also let you know when I do get it, again, in the Play Store or on F-Droid or maybe in the Debian repositories would be awesome. Um, yeah, I'll let you guys know. And if you guys have any experience doing that, especially getting it in the uh, Debian repositories, you know, I've read over the process and you need to get yourself, I forget what they call it, but um, if you never put anything in the repositories before, you need to find someone who's already a package uh, maintainer, I guess, and get them to support you on that. So I and yeah, need to do that through the mailing list. I haven't done that. If anyone has experience doing that, or if you have the ability of getting stuff in the Debian repositories, let me know what I need to do. Uh, I, I've created dev packages once or twice before. It's not something I've done a lot of. Um, I don't know if I need to create the dev package or if I need to, reading through it, it sounded like I needed to have it so that it could be compiled by being pulled from GitLab, but things that were already compiled into one binary for Linux already, so I just kind of have to create a dev package and put the, any um, dependencies in there. But yeah, anyone has any experience doing that, I would appreciate the help. Again, I hope that you enjoy this. I hope you play it. If you play it, definitely let me know what you think, and I hope that you have a great day.